Hey, it's Mike here, and Ken Oates, Magical Oats, detoxify the forever chemicals known as PFAS. They're in the news a ton. You're probably familiar with them. I've done videos on them before, and we have some recent studies actually looking at oats and an active ingredient in oats and its ability to detoxify, lower the levels of PFAS within the body. And this is really a response to a clip that I saw by Dr. Rhonda Patrick. The study used oats. The beta-glucans, which is, by the way, a fermentable type of uh, fiber, they were they actually caused excretion of the forever chemicals. In particular, we're gonna be learning about beta-glucans, which are super interesting, have a ton of research around health benefits. And we're gonna talk about the practical aspect of how much oats you would need to eat in order to get the amount that we see in some of these studies and what other foods beta-glucans are in, et cetera. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna warn you right now, I'm extremely positively biased toward oats. You should not listen to a single word that I say on the topic of oats. I'm just kidding. But I do have them regularly in my breakfast rotation. I feel great eating them. So yeah, I do like them a lot. And of course, I'm all about the whole grain consumption, not that sugar-laden packet of instant oats that you might see in the supermarket aisle. But if you ever see a comment by an account named Oat Simp, just know it's not me, okay? <laughs> anyway, lightning fast refresher on PFAS. PFAS stands for either per or polyfluoroalkyl substances. It's a whole group of various chemical, really industrial chemical compounds. They disrupt hormones. They're in about a third of groundwater globally, which is insane. And they're also a class one carcinogen, according to the WHO, like processed meat. You obviously don't want them in your body. And in addition to them being in water, they're also in various foods. For example, meat, which is a whole video that I did in the past, looking at vegan levels and how they're lower. And yeah, I recently saw a clip by Dr. Rhonda Patrick, who is a PhD biochemist. She's often making the rounds on social media making scientific claims. You know, usually I agree with her and here she is. Oh, the other thing this just came out, this is interesting, also animal data. So forever chemicals, I mentioned forever chemicals, those take two to five years to excrete, but there's studies showing that the they're called um, beta glucans and they're in oats and they're in mushrooms, but the study used oats. They actually caused excretion of the forever chemicals, PFAS in animals, which is something that n doesn't happen. All right, we're gonna pop the study right open, but really fast, it's important to understand what beta-glucans are. It's pretty simple. We're talking about a type of soluble fiber. They are made of chains of glucose, much like starch, but these bonds between the glucose are stronger, which is what allows them to make it further down our digestive system to our gut, where they have a bunch of super positive effects. And yeah, to get nerdier here, the difference between those bonds is that starch has alpha glucosidic bonds and beta glucans have, you guessed it, beta glycosidic bonds. Now you know. Okay, let's look to the study she mentioned. It's this one and it is a 2025 study, which is, yeah, unfortunately done on mice and it's just a pilot study. Don't worry, we're getting to more research after this. But yeah, as you know, I'm not a huge fan of mouse studies. Oftentimes they don't translate to humans. In this case, I think they do as we'll get to. And it's also the case that they're often undergoing Cruel and unusual punishment and killed, but in this case, that unusual punishment is basically just having their drinking water completely contaminated with PFAS. <laughs> anyway, we might as well get to the results. Yeah, they say they observed lower blood concentration trends in the beta-glucan-fed mice for various PFAS compounds. And additionally, this had secondary effects such as these beta-glucan-fed mice actually having a lower fat to body weight ratio, which is wild, as well as some lower triglyceride levels in various parts of the body. But Rhonda believes that this does apply to humans, and why does she say that? Well, she mentions a different study. The reason why I also think it's happening in humans is because there was a human study, not with oats, um, but it was it's a drug that's used to lower cholesterol, and it does the exact same thing that oats, the beta, the beta glucans and oats do. It was shown to clear forever chemicals in people. And if somebody vaguely mentions a study, you know I will not stop until I find it. And actually, it was pretty easy to find. It was this study looking at a bile acid sequestrant drug, and we'll get into that relationship between beta glucans and bile acid in a bit. Again, yes, it is a similar mechanism. But yeah, it was a 2024 study that lasted three months where they gave people the bile acid sequestrant drug called cholesteramine. And yes, this was a randomized crossover trial on humans. Yeah, they gave them the drug and placebo, and then they switched that over so that we could see if there were any time effects. It's just a better way of doing things. And they found that for one 
type of PFAS in particular, PFOS, they saw a 60% reduction, which is no joke. This is especially wild because PFOS is a longer chain type of PFAS and longer chains generally stay in the body for longer. So from various studies, the half-life of this thing is supposed to be five or more years with the CDC putting out a range of 3.3 to 27 years. Yet within just a few months, it went down by 60%, which is more than half. And for other types of PFAS, we saw a 20 to 50% drop again in just three months, which is also huge. But there's another study that also heavily supports this idea that I don't think Rhonda Patrick had seen at the time of filming that. And it was done on humans. It's a Canadian study and it is from 2025, very recent. And the study used oat beta glucans, about one gram of it out of two grams total from the oat powder, and then they also fed a control group some brown rice powder, which doesn't have beta-glucans. I will say this study was only a third as long as that last study that I just mentioned. It was only four weeks long, but even then they found that three different types of PFAS were lower in the beta-glucan group and total PFAS was also statistically significantly lower. So this got me wondering the practical question, how much oatmeal would you have to eat to get that much or even more beta-glucan? And well, from this study, 75 grams of oats has about three grams of beta-glucan. And yeah, that happens to be roughly the amount that I eat. A cup has 81 grams and I eat, you know, between three quarters and a cup when I have it in the morning, dried, which then cooks out to more. So it's wild that I'm eating probably nearly three times the amount of beta-glucans that were used in this study that lowered PFAS just with my oatmeal in the morning. And that's where I would like to see more studies where they have different doses, higher doses, all compared to see what we get. And I would also add that barley has significantly more, you know, not quite twice as much, but close to twice as much beta-glucan as oats. And another fun, interesting fact, the beta-glucan content of both oats and barley depends on a lot of growing factors, such as the weather and fertilization, etc. But I would just go ahead and say that this is great news from a practical sense, because is unlike some other studies that are out there, whether we're talking about curcumin and turmeric, or we're talking about bromelain from pineapple and eye floaters in my recent video, where you would have to just eat so many freaking pineapples, it would be impractical. This is a case where you can easily get this much beta-glucan from a normal amount of whole foods. But this is where it gets really interesting to me, and that is what is the mechanism here? And that brings me back to that bile acid sequestrant drug. And I will say right off the bat, even though those are also used to lower cholesterol and they lower cholesterol in the same way as fiber by taking that bile acid and basically just evacuating it out of the body like a little train. And then not having that bile acid reabsorption means that because bile acids are so close to cholesterol that you have to take more cholesterol from your blood to create more bile acid, kind of complicated. But from the Canadian study, they say that Bile acids are chemically similar to those long chain PFASs in pH, weight, and more, and are transported the same way, and thus, quote, gel forming dietary fibers may enhance elimination of PFAS as they do bile acids. So rewinding a bit, these longer chain PFAS chemicals rely more heavily on liver detoxification, on being put into your bile acids and excreted into your digestive tract where they are then evacuated. Hopefully, the problem is PFAS can just continually be reabsorbed in your intestines after it's dumped and create this sort of toxic loop, especially when you're not getting that beta-glucan and other fiber because fiber's fighting PFAS in two ways here. First of all, that fiber is just going to be binding PFAS when you initially eat it. And then also as your liver dumps it, it's gonna intercept it and prevent that recirculation. So in that way, it's sort of like a vacuum sucking it out of your bloodstream as opposed to just letting it continually recirculate, which is really what is gonna be happening on a standard American low fiber diet because how else are you gonna get rid of it as efficiently? And this is where there's a logical realization that has to be had, and that is when we're seeing PFOS, for example, having at least a five-year half-life in these other studies on people on a standard American diet, but then we can reduce it by 60% just through bile acid sequestration in three months, which is four times, 20 times shorter. Then it becomes obvious that a lot of these aren't actually forever chemicals. They're just forever chemicals if you're not eating fiber. Otherwise with fiber, they're just another toxin that can be detoxified in a reasonable amount of time. This is really interesting. 
because we can look to that vegan PFAS study and just see, okay, what does a population that generally eats higher fiber, you know, there are some processed vegans out there that can keep their fiber pretty low, but what is it showing? And that brings me to this chart, which is fascinating, where we see a trend where the longer that people are vegan, the lower their PFAS is sort of on average. I mean, it seems like some people are able to get it down there really fast, but there might be some other people again who are maybe consuming higher PFAS and not eating as much fiber. Maybe that's this cluster up here, but still more time on a vegan diet, lower levels. And while bladed glucan in oats is awesome, it's definitely a way to do it. And Rhonda Patrick even goes on to say, you know, she's eating oatmeal to try and do this. So I've actually been adding a lot of um, oats. In fact, I had some oatmeal this morning because I'm like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. Like, But we just can look to any more effective bile acid sequestrant type of fiber. They're not all created equal, but for example, we have that psyllium husk as well as pectin, which are both good bile acid sequestrants too. And then of course it's not just oats, it's also barley and certain mushrooms, which we'll talk about in a second. But first I just wanted to hit on a few ways that beta glucans are just super effective and super healthy and looking to actual human studies, more human studies at least. And we have, for example, this one, which found that yeah, beta glucans do decrease calorie intake by increasing satiety. Again, this is sort of like a nature zozempic situation. It's all part of the same equation. Great. And we have several studies showing that oat consumption lowers LDL or bad cholesterol. You know, we have studies like this one showing general beneficial gut effects, especially with bifidobacterium, which is super positive. We also have studies showing improved insulin sensitivity and lower after meal blood glucose spikes in people with type two diabetes, which is great. Just to hop back to a Petri dish for a second, we're just seeing so much anti-cancer stuff with beta glucans as well. For example, this study, which took human cancer cells in a Petri dish, exposed them to beta glucan, and they say, quote, our results indicate strong anti-tumor properties from oat beta glucan, and at the same time, no no toxicity for normal cells, that's what you want. And we also have these fungi derived beta glucans, which are slightly different in their structure. It might have some slightly different effects, but we have some cool studies. For example, this one right here, which found that beta glucan might decrease seasonal allergy suffering, which is pretty amazing. It's a small study, only like 23 people, but still they found, as you can see here, quite a big decrease in just overall subjective allergy suffering, as well as a lowering in things like inflammatory markers and better psychological states as well. And we have this massive meta-analysis of randomized control trials showing that oats in general lower inflammatory markers like C-reactive protein pointing to not just beta glucans, but also an antioxidant unique to oats shown to lower artery oxidative stress. In the end, yes, I think Rhonda Patrick was right. Well, there is better science than that mouse study because it's on humans from that Canadian study showing that oat beta glucans lower PFAS levels you know, compared to controls, which is amazing. And while there could be even more mechanisms, it appears mostly that beta glucan is able to lower the PFAS level in our body because it's a bile acid sequestrant. Our liver is once again dumping these PFAS chemicals, detoxifying them with our bile acids into our intestines where Sadly, people are probably just reabsorbing them over and over again. The same thing happens with hormones and other toxins. But in the case of having fiber there, especially these more effective fibers like beta-glucan, you know, pectin, psyllium, et cetera, then we can totally trap that and just get rid of it, which is great. So we can just get rid of that PFAS fast. And that is also supported by the lower levels in vegans that we see, especially decreasing over time, longer vegans, less PFAS. And of course the benefits of oats in general and beta-glucan goes way further than just just PFAS. And so yeah, um, oat simp out, I mean, Mike the vegan out. Uh, let me know down below what you thought, if you learned anything. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.